All right, Monday, Bill Riley Show moving along here on ESPN 700, noontime hour. Spent a little time talking college football this morning since we're 45 days away from the opener, but you know, we've spent about the last month, maybe two, talking jazz and talking, obviously, free agency and draft and the offseason stuff. And I, I feel really lucky today. Porter got a good pull for me. Uh, we've got a very special guest in studio with us right here. It's weird to say this. It's probably weird for him to hear this, too. Former jazz man, Derek Favors, in studio with us today. Derek, how are you? Good, good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Is that weird to hear? I mean, after eight and a half years here in Salt Lake City with the jazz, is it weird to hear former jazz man? Yeah, I'm still getting used to it now. <laughs> um, it's, it's still still haven't hit me yet, so it's going to take some time, but I'm still getting used to it. Well, we could call him Pelicans power forward and or center, <laughs> depending on how they want to play him down there, Derek Favors. So, Let's let's just start with this. We'll start with the immediate stuff, then we can talk big picture and your time here. What what have the last few weeks been like for you? Because free agency was a whirlwind. You knew that there was a possibility, and, I, and that's what I'll ask you too. But what what have the last few weeks been like? Um, I mean, believe it or not, it's been. I haven't wasn't worried about it yeah. at all. You know, um, I knew it was going to come a time where you know, I was going to get traded, or I probably wasn't going to sign back with the Jazz. So I was already mentally prepared for it. And um, you know, once I got that call, you know, I was happy. I was excited. And um, you know, I talked. I talked to Quinn. I talked to Dennis. I talked to a couple of my teammates afterwards. And um, you know, we said our goodbyes or whatever. But we still keep in touch. But um, no, nah, I mean, I embraced it. You know, it wasn't. I wasn't um, stressing over it. I wasn't worried about it. I knew this day was coming. And um, I'm just excited and, and ready to move on to the next chapter. Yeah, there are very few players in professional sports today that spend their entire career with one team. Now, you spent a minute with the Nets before you were here, but most of your career has been here in Salt Lake City. H- how were Dennis and Quinn? Were they pretty transparent with you the whole way? Yeah, yeah, that was that was honest with me. Even when I signed my um, my contract to come back, you know, that was completely honest with me. They um they told me, you know, you might not finish games, you might not um you know have the scoring opportunities. Or you know you gonna have to play behind Rudy some. So they were they was they were straightforward with me the whole way, and they, and um I understood that you know the way my contract was structured that um you know, I can get traded or with the team option you know they could not pick it up if like better deals come in. So you no, know, we was honest with each other at the um at the table negotiating that contract, and um you no know, even through this process you know we talked and uh, they was honest with me. I was honest with them, and they kind of helped me out a little bit and um. You know, I really appreciate it of, of those two guys. I don't know that moving in life is ever easy, especially if you like where you are. But you've been around this business and this this game long enough to know. I'm going to guess it's easier now for you because you realize and you've been here and you see the business side of it than maybe it would have been in, maybe it, easier now than it was that first time when you were right. traded, when you were right. with the Nets and you were a rookie and you're like, I'm in New Jersey, going to go to Brooklyn soon, and then you got traded. Is it easier later in your career because you understand how the game works? It's definitely easier now. I was 19 when that happened. <laughs> you know, coming from Atlanta, then going up to like the New York area, and then all of a sudden coming out of Utah was a bit like culture change for me. You were the, the youngest time. player in the NBA, I think, I at was. the time. Yeah, yeah, I just turned 19. Yeah. So, um, no, I was def- yeah, definitely the youngest player, and it was just something new for me, but this time around, like you said, um, I know how the business works. I'm embracing uh, a new change, and um, I'm just ready for it. Talking to Derek Favors here on the Bill Riley Show. He's in studio with us here. A couple of more days in town, then he'll be in New Orleans to be introduced as a member of the Pelicans. Um, I, th- I think we saw a note the Athletic, maybe Shams had it, or one of the guys, national guys had it, that, that you and your agent were approaching. You know, I think before any of this happened, you were fielding calls from teams oh, yeah. and talking to people. You were treating it like, hey, I'm, I'm going to be a free agent, whether right. the Jazz didn't pick you up or traded you or whatever. So that sounds like it was almost your mindset. Hey, if I stay in Utah, great, but I'm going to prepare myself like we're going to be gone. Yeah, I definitely had to um, prepare myself for that. I knew um, the moves that they wanted to make. I knew they wanted to get um, more shooters. Um and plus, I had the deadline on my contract, and I didn't want to wait for it. Cause, yeah, you know the money dries up real quick, and teams um, go in different directions real quick. And you know, um, you know, my agent did a great job just finding teams. And um, Dennis Quinn, the whole front office over there, you know, uh, that was honest with me. They, um, you know, they they told me uh, I think they was going out the mirror teacher at first. Yeah. So once we got wind of that, you know, they allowed me to go out and just look for other teams. And, you know, once they signed um, – I can't say his name, Bogdanovich. Yeah, Bogdanovich. Yeah, once they signed him, then we kind of already knew. And 
you know, they helped me also like find a new team to go to. So, well, that's what I was going to ask you. They they like you. You know yeah, this. Right. You're a valued member of the organization. They've made that very very clear. Right. So I, I know it was hard for them. It's got to be a little hard for you because this has been home to move someplace else. But I don't know that everybody would do it, Derek. I don't know that every front office would say. We're going to do our best to find a good landing spot for you because it sounded like they were trying to effort and they obviously efforted efforted the trade. But a lot of teams in this league, it's cold business, and they're just they would have just said, "Hey, Derek, thanks for your time. Right. Moving along." Does it right. mean a little something to you that they they tried their best to find a good landing spot for you? No, it definitely means a lot. You know, um, me and Dennis throughout the years built a relationship. Um, me and Q throughout his years um, with the Jazz, we built a great relationship, and. Um, I think they they really appreciate what I what I brought to the team to the organization taking a step back, um, letting Rudy letting um, at the time like Joe Johnson, um, Jay Crowder, all those guys kind of take over their fourth position at the end of games. I think they really appreciated that and they knew the type of ability that I have, and they just wanted to help me find like a, a great spot for me to go to. So when you hear it's New Orleans, what's your reaction? Um, I was excited about it. You know, um, it's a great opportunity down there, ex- especially with the trade that they just had. Right. Um, they got a lot of young talent, young players down there. Plus, is in the south. You know, I'm from the south too, so yeah, it's kinda, not far. It's probably yeah. a 45 minute flight from New, uh, from Atlanta to New Orleans, right? Yeah, maybe a little longer. Maybe a little, a little longer. longer. Yeah, but um, no, I was I was excited about it. I thought it was gonna be a it's gonna be a great opportunity for me. And uh, like I said, I'm just ready to um for that new chapter. Now I'm just gonna say it, Derek, right now. You're going to have to watch that conditioning in New Orleans. You're right. getting back to Southern food once right. again. I'm telling right. you what, I'm sure that the trainers in New Orleans are all over those guys because right. you can eat well in that place. Yeah, you're exactly <laughs> right. No, nah, but I'm, I'm older, wiser now. Uh, I know how to control my, my, my weight, I know how to control my diet, so no, I'll be fine. Talking to Derek Favors here on the Bill Riley Show. He's in studio here with us today. So you, you hear it's New Orleans. You know what they're made up of. They right. they bring in JJ Reddick. You know JJ. Did right. you guys play against each other in college, or is he a little bit older? No, than he, you? he's a lot older. No. Is he? Yeah, he's a yeah he's a lot older than me. Is he a lot older yeah, than you? He, or just a little bit older. When than he was him? at when he was at Duke, I remember I was still in in junior high school. Okay, yeah. So he's so he's he's a little bit. What? Well, yeah. No, he's he's quite a bit. Then if you were still in junior high yeah, school, still, then he's I think quite maybe a bit. like his senior year or yeah, okay. his last year. I was like in the eighth grade. And yeah. then then you've got him. You got Drew Holiday down there too. Drew's know, a good point. Yeah, I know Drew. I'm sure you know Drew too. Well, you've been around. You know everybody now. Yeah. But then there's youngins. You right. got those guys that have been a couple of years in the league with with LA, the Lonzo Balls, the Josh Hart's, the Brandon Ingrams, and then you've got the youngster Zion Williamson. So right. it's a different spot for you now in your career. Yeah. When you came to Utah, you were 19 going on 20. Right. Now you're the kind of one of the older guys on the team. Are you looking forward? And in, in his New Orleans, as David Griffin and, and or Alvin Gentry talked to you about mentoring the young fella. Yeah, they definitely have. Once the um, the trade went down, I talked to both of them, man. You know, that was one of the things they were talking about, just coming down, being um, being a leader, being a mentor, um, and just just teaching those young guys. Yeah. Um, like the game and the business and just playing that leadership role. So that was something I was excited about too. Who was that guy for you when you came into the league? Did you have that guy? Was there somebody that kind of pulled you aside that, that helped mentor you just a little bit? Definitely. Um, when I was in Jersey, my rookie year, um, guys like Joe Smith, um, he played, I think, 16, 17 years in the league. Joe Smith, um, Stephen Graham, yeah. um, Anthony Morrow, um, Brooke Lopez, those type guys. And when I came to um to Utah, Al Jefferson, Big Al, yeah, Paul Mills out. Um, Milmo was still here. That was his last year before he got traded. Um, Earl Watson. Um, Earl's a good dude now. A uh, great dude. Me yeah. and him still keep in touch a lot. Earl. Um, it, it was a lot of guys there, so I had good mentors coming up. So we're talking to Derek Favors here on the Bill Riley Show. Have you had conversations yet with any any of your new teammates in New Orleans? Have you talked to Zion yet? Have you talked to Drew? Have you talked to JJ yet? I talked to Drew um, the night that the trade was announced. Right. Um, Drew texted me. We shared a couple of text messages back and forth. But um, other than him, I talked to um, obviously the GM and the, and the head coach. Um, talked to the couple of training staff members, but no, I haven't talked to everybody yet. But I'm pretty sure at the press conference, once I meet everybody, you know, we'll probably um, exchange information. Alvin's style, philosophy fit your game pretty well? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. Um, I mean, he said he want to play a, a fast-paced game, fast-paced offense. You know, I'm built for that too. Yeah. You know? So I'm, I'm ready for it. Even at 29, 28, 29, you can still get I'm up and down and run? I'm still young. Yeah, I'm and by, by the way, a little birdie told me today might be your birthday. It is. 
You're not as young as you were. Yeah, just, just, a, <laughs> just a year older. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Derek Favors. Congratulations oh, on that on another thank year. You. So um, you've had an interesting ride here in Salt Lake City. You, you got here mm-hmm. in kind of the changing of the guard. It was, you know, you were part of the Darren Williams trade. You drafted by the Nets. You played half a year there. You come here. It was a weird time here because Jerry Sloan, Coach Sloan, who I'm sure you know now very well, he was on his way out. Darren wasn't feeling good about things here. It was a weird time in jazz basketball. Ty Corbin takes over as the the head coach. What were those early days like? Now that you've got a little perspective and you've seen kind of the, the turbulent times and now it's settled down the last couple of years, what were those early, especially for a young player like you, did you know what was going on? Um, I, I didn't, you know, it was, it was something new to me, but I was prepared from Jersey to come over because when I was in Jersey, it was a lot of trade rumors, a lot right. of you no know, media attention about everything. So when I got here, when, um, you know, when Ty started taking over after Jerry stepped down and, you know, went through those changes, um, I mean, it was tough at first because I still had to find myself as a player. Right. I, I wasn't getting the, the playing time that I wanted, but I understood it. You know, Al and Paul did a great job of just, you know, keeping me level-headed with everything and keeping me confident. Um, and then going on to the years where Al and Paul and them left and it was me and Gordon, um, you know, we had that one tough year. I think we won like 20-something games. Yeah. But, you know, it's been uphill since then. And, um just growing into a role, growing into a player, growing into a person, I think it all helped me out at the end. Talking about players, and I think sometimes fans forget you are people. You're not just those guys right. on TV running up and down the floor. What's this free agency time like? You're hearing your name in the media. I don't know if you're a social. I know you've got a Twitter account, but I don't know if you check it much. I mean, what's it like hearing your name attached to this team? And that team, and this team, and maybe you're going to be traded at the deadline. You right. know, because there was some talk. There was some little talk that maybe you get moved at the deadline for maybe Mike Conley. Right. But but what what's that like? Because that's your life. Yeah. Now you're still being paid nicely. You've got a great job. You're playing a game that people would love to be able to play. But it's still your life. Right. Um, and you're you're not always in control of it. So g- give our listeners an idea of what's that what what it's like. One to hear your name attached to trades, knowing free agency is coming, and hearing it kicked around all over the place. Um, I mean, tell you the truth, you just can't worry about it. Yeah. I mean, my name been in trade rumors since the day I was drafted. <laughs> so I was just kind of used to it. You know, every every summer or every trade deadline, I was going on social media and I have fun with the fans saying, you know, I want to hear y'all trade proposals this year because I know I'm in it, you know. So <laughs> nah, I just I just find ways to have fun with it, not really pay attention to it. Um, Remember that, you know, it's a business. You know, stuff like this happens. You get traded. You sign with new teams. No, you just got to mentally prepare yourself for it. And um, it's tough on the moving part, but, you know, that's, the, that's what you sign up for when you want to go to the NBA. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back on the other side. Derek Favors for a few more minutes with us here in studio today on his birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, D. Faves. Uh, we'll come back on the other side, talk about some memories, some good memories. Also, I want to get Derek's thoughts on this team now. He's not going to be part of it, but his friends are still part of it. And I want to get his thoughts on what lies ahead for the Utah Jazz. And then we'll kick some other NBA stuff around as well with former Jazz uh, forward and center and now New Orleans Pelican big man, Derek Favors, here on the Bill Riley Show on ESPN 700. All right, Bill Riley Show continuing here on a Monday, uh, saying uh, happy birthday to the birthday boy, Derek Favors, who's in studio with us here today. We spent the first segment talking about the last couple of weeks and the move to New Orleans and some of that stuff. Let's take a little walk down memory lane here, Derek. You got here in uh, February, I believe it was, of 2011. We talked about the changes that were going on here. What did 19-year-old Derek Favors Know about Salt Lake City, Utah, or the Jazz before you got here? Man, I didn't. I didn't know anything about Salt Lake City. I, if I can remember correctly, I think I did a, a project one time in like third or fourth grade, and my state was Utah. So I think that's the only thing at the time that I knew about it. But um, nah, I mean, at nineteen, like I said, I was coming from Atlanta. Yeah, then was in New York in the New York area for. Um, half a season and just coming out here to Utah, like I said, it was just a, a culture change for me. How much have you seen this city? I've lived here 18 years. Right. You've been here eight and a half years. How much have you seen this city and this market change up in the time you've been here? It changed a lot. I remember when I first got here, it wasn't like as many restaurants. It wasn't as many um, apartments, condos. And Downtown's like nice now. It is, super nice. I think when I first got here, the, the City Creek Mall was just built. Yeah. Or, or again, built, so... 
that was a big change. And um, no, nah, it looked totally different now than when I first got here. I'm sure people around the league ask you, man, Salt Lake City? You Because my friends do. My friends that have never been here are like, Salt Lake City? You live in Salt Lake City? Why? Why do you do – I even did that to a buddy of mine when I lived in Jacksonville, Florida. I made fun of him for – he had a house out here. He grew up out here. Then I got out here and I was like, oh, this place is okay. It's not, I, it's not I, as bad as you think. I always tell people, it's easy to live here. It is. It, it, easy. It's easy to live here. People are great. It's clean. The weather's great. There's no humidity. And yeah. you know about that. I'm yeah, sorry. You're going that. back to humidity. Yeah. Oh, you're going back to humidity. <laughs> but I tell people all the time, it's easy to live here. And once I get friends of mine to come out here and visit, right. go skiing, come out, go hiking, do some stuff in this, they love it. Did right. you find the same thing when, when you I get did. friends or family or people to come out and visit you? I did. I did. When I first got out here, a lot of my friends and family members, they wanted to come visit because they'd never been to Utah sure. either. So when they got out here, um, you know, every season, every summer, they always ask, like, man, can I come back out to Utah? Can I come back out to Utah? And I was like, yeah, come on. And they'll come out here and stay for like a week, two weeks, and they always talk about it. Like, man, I love coming out there to Utah because it's, it's easy out here. You know, don't have to worry about nothing. Um, it's clean, good people. So takes 20 minutes to get anywhere, pretty much. Pretty much, no traffic. Oh, That's my gosh, thing. Atlanta yeah. traffic. Oh, Ridiculous. Oh, man, Ridiculous. you don't even want to talk about it. I always tell people, Atlanta is L.A. without the beach. Pretty much, L.A. and New York. And L.A. Together. and New York yeah. without the beach. I mean, it's just interstates. And how once you get where you're going, it's fine. Yeah. But getting there, whew, You have man. to leave like an hour and a half you got early. got a plan. Yeah, you got you, the plan. You got a plan. Yeah. So you've been here. You like it. Um, what What was it like? You Ty was your first coach. And now you've got Quinn and, and, and that staff there. What was that transition like? The early years were turbulent. You didn't win nearly as much. So when Ty's let go and they hire Quinn, what changed? And, and how's, how have you seen this thing grow since Quinn took over? Um, I think Ty was put in a, in a tough situation. I think, I think the old saying is like, never, re, never be the person to replace a legend, something like that. Yeah, don't be the man that has to replace the man. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah. And I think uh, Ty was kind of put in a tough situation with that because he had to replace Jerry Sloan, who was obviously a legend in basketball. So, um, I mean, I think he did a great job. He did the best, best as he could. Um, but, you know, we just had some tough years. And when Quinn came in, um, he brought in just a different type of culture, a different type of, like, philosophy on, on how he wanted to play. Um he wanted to get up and down more, but he really wanted to focus on defense, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, he was he was a, a real like player coach. You know, he let guys go out there and play, make mistakes, um, and learn from them. Um, you know, we did have some three hour practices sometimes, but not <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't too many of them. Um, but no, nah, Q did a great job of just keeping guys engaged throughout the whole practice, throughout games, and. I think a lot of guys really enjoy playing for him. Coaching change in any sport, NBA, NFL, college, high school, whatever, usually when there's a coaching change made, it's because things weren't necessarily going the way they wanted. Right. So a lot of times coaches have to change mindsets and cultures. That's their first job. Right. Before they can do anything on the floor, they've got to start getting you thinking the way they're thinking. Right. How long did it take you to buy in? How long did it take you to know, okay, this guy, he, he's got an idea of what, what's going on? No, I mean, I bought in. I was – I bought it in day one. Did you? Yeah. As soon as he came in, he called me. Uh, I think I was in Utah anyway, so I went up and met with him, and we were just talking, and um, I was sold from day one with him. And um, especially when it started getting into training camp, and you know, he started he started teaching, started um, showing us what he wanted us to do, and just giving us his vision on how he wanted wanted us to play. And I mean, he didn't put a lot of pressure on us to win games. He just always said one game at a time. You know, we um we might not win 50 games this year, but we win 30, 35 games. You know, next year we come back win 40, 45. So he always kept it like that. And Most of the guys buy in quick. I think so. Um, I mean, we had a couple of guys who were still, was still kind of finding it, but I think for the most part, like um majority of the team bought into him from day one. Head coach is the head coach, right? But the assistant coaches. You've always got one. You've always got a guy. Yeah. The assistant coaches. Was your guy Johnny? Was your guy Alex? Was your guy Antonio? G uh, Igor? Who, who was who was Derek's guy? Nah, all those were my guys. Well, they were I mean, all, but one of, one uh, of them had to I mean, be your guy. I mean, the guy who I worked with the most was was Antonio Lane. Yeah, no, he was my guy. Um, we worked a lot. We talked a lot. I was kind of sad when he moved on to Cleveland this past um off season. But um, no, nah, that that was my guy for yeah. sure. Um, we we shared a lot of stories. Um. Even before the game, we'll talk talk about basketball. He's one of like the smartest guys I know. You know I always joke around with him, saying he's the only guy that's from Mobile, Alabama, that can speak fluent Japanese. <laughs> like, <I've, laughs> so he's he's an awesome guy to talk to. And um, even with Johnny, Alex, Igor, um, Wells, Mike Wells, um, 
Um, Coach Watt, all those guys, man, they, they got a great coaching staff over there. So you know this team pretty well. You know right. Donovan. Right. You, you obviously know Rudy. Right. Uh, you know Royce and Dante and those guys. Now the new pieces that are coming in. Um, is there a little, is there a little, a little bit of part of you that's a little disappointed you're not going to be here to be part of this? It is. I mean, it's just like switching schools. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you get you sad when you have to transfer schools because you're gonna miss all your friends, all your teachers. You're gonna you get comfortable in one spot now. You got to go somewhere else and meet new people and kind of start all the way back over. But um, I mean, it's a little part of me that wish I was still here. But you know, sometimes you have to move on. How good do you think they can be this year? I think they can be really good. I think they got a, um, I think they got a really good team. You know, they added some good pieces with um Conley and. Bogdanovich. Um, Bogdanovich. I don't want to mess his name up. Bogdanovich, um, Ed Davis, um, Jeff Green. I don't want to mess his name up either. Moutier. 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 Yeah, Manuel Moutier. Moutier. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so they, they added some good guys. Um, I'm pretty sure Dante's going to come back. He's going to be 100% healthy. Um, I think they're going to be really good. I think so, too. I wanted to ask you about Dante. You've been around him his entire career. Right. Some people just have bad luck. Yeah. get injured a lot. But if this kid can stay healthy, Derek, and that's the big if with Dante. It's not right. basketball talent. It's it's staying. But if he can stay healthy, how good can he be? Yeah, he could be really good. You think, think so? Yeah, I think he just had bad luck. He got. I think his rookie year he played all 82 games. Yep. Then the next year I think he played in the Olympics and hurt his knee. And the next year another freak accident. Guy fell on his shoulder, so he had to miss half the season with that. And then obviously the ankle injury now. So I think I even text him um, – the day when I got traded, you know, I told him that, you know, this year is going to be your year. You know, you're going to be 100% healthy, um, and you're going to have a great year. He could be a huge piece for them if he can stay on the court because he yeah. does a lot of things. He can be play the point. Yeah. I think he's a great wing defender, too. He is, really good wing defender. I mean, I think he's just – to me, I think that might be the best thing that he does. We haven't seen him play enough to see yeah. his shooting and things like that. But, boy, I remember the playoffs a couple of years ago when – for a couple of games there, he did a pretty good job locking up Harden out on the wing against Houston. He did. Before he got hurt that game, um, preseason game with his shoulder, mm-hmm. I, I thought that was going to be his breakout season. Cause we were seeing it. We saw it in summer league that year. saw it in when he was coming in playing pickup during the summer before training camp, even during training camp. Yeah. Like He was one of the best players out there, and everybody kind of felt it. Like, okay, Dante could have a breakout year. Then that freak accident happened where the dude fell on his shoulder, and he had to miss half the season. So – I think this season coming up, he's going to have a great year. All right, let's take uh, our final time out. We'll come back and one more segment here with Derek Favors on his birthday. We'll look ahead to New Orleans, go around the league. Some crazy stuff happened in the league in free agency this year. Right. Everybody's got new – not just Derek Favors. Everybody's got new addresses, it seems like, this year. Exactly. We'll do that and let him say goodbye to Jazz fans next, right here on the Bill Riley Show on ESPN 700. All right, final segment here in the noontime hour on the Bill Riley Show. And again, I can't thank enough Derek Favors for taking a few minutes, not only out of his day, but out of his birthday, to come into studio here and uh, talk a little bit about his time with the Utah Jazz uh, here on the program today. So what has you most excited about New Orleans? What, what are you most excited about getting down to New Orleans? Um, <laughs> obviously, you know, a new opportunity for me. Yeah. Um, being, being a starter, being a full-time starter, um, I'm excited about that. And um, excited about the change, you know, yeah. just a, a change of scenery almost. Um, just being out here for eight years and just finally just moving on to something else and just excited for the change. Well, I think the change is exciting, one, because you're going back to a part of the country where you grew up, the South. You can grow up in New Orleans, but you're going back to the South. But two, this is a, this is a good team. Maybe, maybe not a great team yet. Right. But they're they're not sending you to a terrible team. It'd be one thing if you were off to, and I'm not, I won't name a team and put you in a bad spot, but if you were going to a bad team, right. that that may not make you quite as excited, but you're going to a team that's got a chance to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, good, young, exciting, exciting team, pretty much. Got a lot of young pieces down there. Um, got a good coaching staff. Yeah. A good city. I know New Orleans is more of a football city, but um, – I mean, got a good good energy down there, so I'm, I'm excited about it. All right, clear this up for me once and for all since you're leaving Salt Lake City. Is Derek Favors a center or a power forward? <laughs> what are you? Come on. Uh, I, you're going to be playing five, I think, in yeah, New Orleans. Yeah, you're going to guess... be playing next to the young and Zion Williamson. But right. what, what it, down deep, if I, if I put that true serum on you, and I'm doing it right now, well, I mean, are you a center or a forward? 
I guess I'm a I'm a forward. They can play center, <laughs> or I'm a center. They can play the forward position. So you're just you're dodging <laughs> that question, Derek. You are, and that's part of your right. versatility. And I think part of what made you so valuable here for so long, right. you were a good power forward and a great insurance policy if something happened to Rudy. Right, right. What was it like, by the way, banging with Rudy? You got to ask him what it was like banging with me. <laughs> <laughs> that dude's long. Yeah, I mean, I mean, know. he's long. I mean, that's that's the thing. That's the thing. He's not just seven feet tall, but he's seven yeah. feet, and those arms are just forever. Right, right. they are. Um, now he definitely gotten better over the years, and I I think that's because he had to go against me every day in practice. So he of course had, it is. He had to get stronger. Had to get tougher. So I mean, that's a question you got to ask him. I will ask him. Ask him that it, on media day. I, I will go down to media <laughs> day and say, "Hey, Faves, want me to ask you what was it like to bang with him <laughs> right. for the last five years?" Um, all right, the, the summer's been crazy. I mean, you got moved. It, it seems like everybody with any kind of a name in the NBA has got a new address this summer. Well, what's jumped out at you? What's surprise of all the free agency moves and everything that's kind of transpired over the last two three weeks? Mm-hmm. What made you go? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, definitely the Paul George situation. Um, the, the Westbrook, the Al Horford, um, I think like the Mike Conley trade too. Yeah. I kind of shot a lot of people. Um, you were part of that by the way. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, I don't know. Um, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's a lot of moves that that's been made this, um, all season. And, um, uh, I think it'll make the NBA more exciting, more watchable now for people. Yeah. I think it's more balanced out now. So, I mean, it'll be an exciting season. Yeah, it is, and and I think the West. I mean, the East is good. Don't get right. me wrong, but the West is just the West always been tough. West always been yeah. tough, but man, oh man, I, I I've been saying this for a couple of weeks now, Derek. There might be two or three teams that have forty five, forty six, forty seven wins. Right. Don't make the playoffs. Yeah, you have to win at least forty five games just to get in the eighth spot. And in the East, you can win like thirty, but you have to win at least forty five, fifty games just to get in the eighth spot. So. No, it's definitely going to be tough. There's no nights off. There's really no nights off in the West now, right? Definitely not. Definitely not. It never was. But um, now with all the movements going on, it's definitely like you're going to have to bring it every night now. By the way, I know he wasn't part of the Mike Conley deal, but his name was kicked around so much at the trade deadline and early on that it felt like uh, he was part of that deal. So the West is good. You're on your way to New Orleans. The Jazz have their pieces. It's going to be interesting. Have you thought yet? I mean, you probably haven't, but you're going to come back here and play a couple of times. Yeah. It will be weird going in that other – you ever been in the visitor's locker room down at Vivint? Once. Okay. That was my rookie year, and I, I don't remember it at all. Um, I remember we came in um, my rookie year. The only thing I remember is just the court. I remember um, – I don't even – I don't remember that game. I remember when we played Utah in New Jersey, but right. playing in Utah I don't remember at all. That, that, the rookie year has got to be a blur, though, right? Yeah. I mean, it's got to be one of those things where, man, I remember bits and pieces, yeah. but I don't have a lot of clear memories. I mean, it's some things I can still remember and still kind of see, but other things I don't I don't remember. All right. Do you remember when you were getting the phone call that you were traded to Utah? Do you remember getting that call? I didn't find out. Um, or did you find out on TV like everybody else I did? I found out on ESPN. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I was in the locker room in Jersey in the training room, and the assistant GM told me um, that I need, I'm, I'm not practicing today, that I need to go home, and I've been involved in the trade. And deep down, I was like, I hope I'm going somewhere down south. <laughs> so I called my agent. He didn't hear anything about it. So when I got home, I just turned on the TV. I was just flipping through channels and it just came up on ESPN. And Darren Williams said the same thing. D. Yeah. Will said he was sitting on, like, the trainer's table right. in New Jersey before the game and found out that he was traded. So you, you have a recollection of this second trade, though. You know where you were and what happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I know <laughs> you exactly find, how And you didn't find out on TV no, this no, time, I did you? I found out on, on the phone this time. <laughs> well, that's good. Um, you are a fan favorite. Jazz fans, I, I could tell you because my social media, my Twitter blew up, this radio station, people were like, they can't get rid of Derek. They can't. You and I both know it's business. It's just right. part of the game. But people here, have, they already miss you, and I'm sure you've felt it I'm, when you've gone out to dinner or walked around town. Right. What's been the reaction you've gotten from fans since the trade? Um, I mean, it's just been pretty much, you know, we're going to miss you. Uh, thank you for all the years um, that you that you gave us. And, um, you know, it hasn't been too emotional. Yeah. It's just been a lot of, like, thank you, and we're going to miss you, and good luck in New Orleans, and you know, we're always going to be your fans, and just just little things like that. What would you tell Jazz fans? A bunch of them are listening to this interview right now. What would you tell them for the eight and a half, the eight and a half years you get to, got to spend here? Uh, I just tell them thank you for all those years, all those years supporting me. Um, you know, through the ups and downs, through the through the tough tough seasons, um, good seasons, 
bad games, good games, just always supporting, always coming out um, every game, um, treating it as like a playoff game, sold out. Um, and it just it's just been like wonderful. I, I've enjoyed my time in Utah, enjoyed playing in front of them. And, uh, you know, hopefully when I come back in New Orleans, you know, they can show me some love. Oh, I'm sure they will. Yeah. They'll show you a little love. They won't give you the Derek Fisher treatment, that's yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, don't boo me. Yeah, there'll be no <laughs> booing Derek favors. That much we know. Uh, before I let you go, favorite memory. You were here eight and a half years. Favorite memory on the court, off the court, whatever it might be, basketball related, but give me your favorite memory of being a jazz guy. Um, hmm. I think just the relationships I built while I was in Utah. Just meeting a lot of people, a lot of different people. Um. Definitely got to give a shout out to uh, the old strength and conditioning coach Mark McCown. That was my guy. Big Mark. Yeah, that was my guy. That was my guy. Um, him and BZ and all those guys when I first got here. Uh, but not nah, just just me. All the people who I met, building all the friendships, all the relationships, all the um, all of the um, support they showed me throughout the years. So it's been a good run, man. It has been. You looking forward to the press press conference tomorrow? Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. And it's um, tomorrow, right? It is. What's today? Yeah, it is tomorrow. Tomorrow, Tuesday, yep. Got to hop on that plane, make that connector on Delta, get oh, down to New Orleans. Yeah, that's and, the worst part. Oh. You're going to be in Atlanta, but you're not yeah, going to be in yeah. Atlanta. I got a, like a two-hour layover, I think, and then jump on a plane. You know that two-hour layover is going to be more than that. It'll be like two and a half, three hours. I hope not. Summertime in Atlanta, there'll be thunderstorms and yeah, stuff. It's already like that in New Orleans now. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully I can get in. Um won't, have to, won't get delayed or anything, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. All right, enjoy your birthday today. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for eight and a half years of fun basketball. It's been a blast watching you with the Utah Jazz, and good luck in New Orleans. Appreciate it. Thank have you. A, have a po' boy for me. I got you. Thank you. There he is, the birthday boy, Derek Favors, with us here on the Bill Riley Show today. Awfully nice of him to come in studio. Big shout-out to my guy, Porter Larson, who made this happen, and uh, I appreciate it. Jazz fans, send him, uh, send him some love on social media. Tell him you're going to miss him. And uh, we'll see him a couple of times when he comes in with the Pelicans.